Our runner-up is the Houthi missile strike on Riyadh and Saudi Arabia's response in blockading Yemen. The Yemeni rebels teamed up with former President Saleh's forces over the past year and thereby gained access to the country's missile arsenal. Though Saudi Arabia is accusing Iran of providing the Houthi National Liberation Movement with these munitions because it conforms to the kingdom's politically correct interpretation of regional events by blaming Tehran for all the Mideast problems. There are conflicting reports about whether or not Saudi Arabia's military was successful in shooting down the missile before it hit the Riyadh airport, but in any case, this incident proves why the country is so interested in buying Russia's S-400 state-of-the-art anti-missile system. It also just as importantly shows that the war on Yemen is now boomeranging back into the kingdom itself which presents the young crown prince with a fateful choice to either double down on his disastrous military commitment to reinstalling ousted President Hadi or to wisely apply the Russian model from Syria in spearheading a face-saving political solution that could allow him to eventually withdraw from the conflict. Judging by Riyadh's decision to de facto blockade all of Yemen, except for Aden, just like it's doing against Qatar, which was already occurring anyhow but is now being made public in an attempt to justify it as a reaction to the missile strike, Mohammed bin Salman appears to be giving in to his initial impulse to react somewhat militarily. This could have dire humanitarian consequences for Yemen, where 17 million people out of his total population of 25 million are facing food insecurity challenges as a result of the two and a half year conflict, with nearly 7 million of them classified as being in a state of emergency at risk of famine-like dangers. In addition, the World Health Organization predicts that the world's largest and fastest spreading cholera outbreak in modern history will reach its one millionth case by the end of the year. So a more comprehensive tightening of the existing blockade, save for the coalition-occupied southern port of Aden, could be a lot deadlier in the long term than a conventional military response to the missile strike. Mohammed bin Salman needs to avoid being sucked even deeper into the Yemeni quagmire because this could seriously destabilize his rule by turning the military against him and making it an instrument of the pro-American royals who might be plotting a palace coup. Therefore, it's possible that the crown prince might make any forthcoming blockade relief conditional on the Houthis unconditionally entering into a Saudi-brokered political dialogue with Hadi under Riyadh's terms. Though, it's not likely that they'll agree to this, and the future king's reformer's reputation could suffer if his actions are framed by the international media as essentially amounting to humanitarian blackmail for geopolitical purposes. At our top spot, we've got Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman draining the swamp. The future king has been much more successful in this endeavor than Trump due to the fundamental differences in political systems and leadership culture, which has seen him decisively neutralize a broad swath of pro-American challengers for the throne and their supportive conspirators under the pretext of an anti-corruption campaign. While the murky world of Saudi palace politics means that nothing can ever be known for certain, there is reason to believe that elements of the country's deep state, or in other words, its permanent military, intelligence, and diplomatic bureaucracies, which in this case are mixed in with its royal and economic elite, were poised to push back against his ambitious Vision 2030 socioeconomic and religious reforms as well as the kingdom's newfound great power partnerships with China and Russia that were forged under his influential stewardship. Considering just how radically this changed the country's power structure by making the Salman clan the most powerful branch of the House of Saud and bestowing his bloodline with unprecedented influence over the Wahhabi clerics, it's not an exaggeration to refer to last weekend's events as a royal coup, albeit one that was staged preemptively in order to counter an existing regime change plot against Muhammad bin Salman. This proactive counter coup has been met with loud applause from the country's majority youthful population, approximately 70% of whom are under the age of 30, and have come to resent the rigid and religiously fundamentalist royals that their modernizing rock star-like crown prince just recently deposed. This means that they could be expected to flood into the streets to support him if his rule comes under threat, just like Turkish President Erdogan did during the failed pro-American coup attempt in summer 2016. That said, the greatest threat facing Mohammed bin Salman right now isn't a traditional color revolution in the sense of an externally guided liberal youth movement being formed for regime change purposes, but an older, more religiously conservative individuals being encouraged to violently oppose what they may have come to think is an apostate leadership 
violating the basic tenets of the kingdom traditional Wahhabi interpretation of Islam by allowing women to drive and earlier vowing to return to moderate Islam after swiftly dealing a blow to extremist ideologies. Ironically, this same hateful takfiri or infidel narrative was once wielded by the Saudis themselves to destabilize states abroad, but it might now be used against the country's future leader in order to unseat him. So the consequence of this scenario succeeding would likely throw the kingdom into civil war because of Saudi Arabia's near-even generational divide between liberal youth and conservative adults. For now, however, Mohammed bin Salman can likely rest easy knowing that the most pressing world threats to his rule are now being neutralized and some of their billions of dollars of estimated seized assets might be redirected to subsidizing the very costly Vision 2030 National Reform Program and its flagship NEOM Future City Project. But the Crown Prince still has to be careful to avoid getting bogged down in the Yemeni quagmire if he wants to retain the pivotal loyalty of the military during this crucial time. Alright folks, this wraps up this week's edition of Context Countdown, and as I always do, I want to warmly thank each and every one of you for listening to my program. 